It hardly seems possible that it was 12 months ago that I stood on top of that very tower over there to introduce the 2011 Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship. But it was a year ago, and we find ourselves back at Brands Hatch to kickstart what promises to be one of the best seasons ever for F1 sidecar racing in the UK. All nine of our championship rounds are running with BSP. Let's take a look then at the 2012 calendar. Unprecedented, I think that's the word. The prestigious British Superbike Championship hosting all nine of our championship rounds. Brands Hatch, three times we're back here. And for the first time ever, this wonderful series finds its way across the water in Holland at Assen for round seven. Round two from Thruxton, then Snetterton, up north to Knock Hill, back to Brands, Donington Park, Assen, as I've said, Silverstone, and it all ends here, back at Brands. Well, nine rounds, a terrific season ahead. Joining me in the paddock this year will be Carol McBride. An F1 sidecar passenger in her own right, taking a, a year's sabbatical, I think it's fair to say. If you remember, she joined us last year, late in the season, doing some commentary, but this time you're at the sharp end. You're looking forward to it? Yeah, I really am excited about season, Barry. It's a really, really good setup, and, you know, nine rounds, BSB, fantastic. This profile of this championship has gone up and up and up. You've been involved with F1 sidecar racing for a long time. Have you seen it at this level? I haven't seen it at this level for a long, long time, and it's come on leaps and bounds in the last couple of years, and it actually rivals the World Championship, which is absolutely fantastic. The work that's gone into it is amazing. The backing we've got, and we've got World Crews as well here, which is absolutely excellent. Yeah, tell us a bit more about those World Crews. What, what do you think is the appeal? What brings them here? Um, I think the appeal, the appeal of it is, is actually the level of the championship, you know, the publicity we've got, and we've got the, um, all of the rounds at BSB, the hospitality side of it. It's just the whole package um, and the chance to race against a packed grid. You know, we've got 27 sidecars here this weekend, which is another thing that we haven't seen for a couple of years is, you know, great grids. And for the first time this year, well, we're crossing the water. We've done that before, but normally we go to Ireland. This time we're going to Assen. Yeah, Assen's fantastic. I mean, how good is that? It's just great to have that in the calendar as well, isn't it? So, yeah, an international appeal as well. Brilliant. I think those foreign riders, if they're not clashing with World Championship, are going to be here. I think that speaks volumes. Yes, yes, yeah, so do I. Yeah, I think that we've got, um, what, four international crews here this uh, the season. Um, we've got France, Germany, Sevilla and Sweden and some of the crews here this weekend. Brilliant. So, come on, I'm going to put you on the spot now. You know who's riding. You know the way these guys have been going. Do you see Tim Reeves getting another successive championship, or is he going to be pushed? Uh, I think he's going to be pushed this year, actually. I mean, we saw him down here last year. We saw him beaten by Barry James. Um, also, we've got Steinerhausen here this weekend. You know, we've got Lovelock as well, who's on the, on the ball yesterday. Um, so I don't think he's going to have it all his own way. And, of course, the Birchills as well. So, no, I think it's going to be an interesting season ahead of us. Thanks, Carol. Well, Carol mentioned that Barry James had a win here last year over Tim Reeves at the opening round. This weekend, we're on the 1.2 mile short indie circuit. Let's take a look at it then from the rider's point of view. Well, it might be 1.2 miles, and I say short. Believe me, it's very short. It's busy, busy, busy. This is a view dropping over Paddock Hill Bend, away, adverse camber, everything trying to head towards the gravel. You can feel the outfit pushing out there. Then nail it in a straight line, down the gears, hard on the brakes. The back will try and overtake you at this point. Round you go. Not too much power on because the front will step out again. Moving across now to the outside, tucking in on the reshaped Graham Hill Bend, been like that for two or three seasons, in actual fact now. Along the Cooper Strait, a bit of a wiggle there as the power came on. Into Surtees, adverse camber here, passenger will be hard out left, then getting across very quickly to the right to keep it driving. Also, the passenger will be keeping his or her, in Carol's case, weight forward to keep the front steering, give the driver all the steering he needs. Driving, 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 down through the dip of clearways onto the start, finish straight, 1.2 miles, it's over in the twinkling of an eye, and that's a lap. New for 2012, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at various aspects of the championship. It could be bike, bike design, could be a crew, could be a rider, could be a passenger, anything at all that we think might be of interest to you, we're going to try and bring to you. Carol's going to handle that for us, and we're calling it our spotlight feature. Our spotlight feature for round one 
is our influx of foreign crews. And I'm lucky to have here with me Gregory Clues, our current champion, and also Jörg Steinhausen, a name you might recognize, whose father is Rolf Steinhausen, a double world champion. So Jörg, what is the appeal of this championship? What brings you here? What brings us here is uh, preparation for the world championship next week. We formed a new team with Greg and BMW as an engine supplier. It's a big step for, for us as a team and a big step also for, for cyclists in general. Um, yeah, it was back in the 70s when BMW stopped with their uh, Rennsport engines yeah. and they were very successful, 19 championships as I said. And um, yeah, perhaps we can you know, close that gap and uh, um, help to, to win a, a 20th title. So uh, the British championship is probably the, the best in the moment. And it's perfect to get some uh, um, yeah, race experience uh, with uh, Tim Reeves and uh, Ben Burchill. So we are looking forward to that. So Gregory, this is your first time out on the BMW. How does this compare to the machine that you were passenger in last year? Is there any difference at all? I think it's, it's different engines. The technology is new. They use a different, uh, yeah, different technology. So um, after, if you have a big difference, I don't know really. It's just the first race we do. Uh, we do so we need. Uh, we need to have a good compare with uh, with Suzuki, but I think it's why it's yeah I think it's good engine yeah, yeah. and it's good uh, good challenge for for us because BMW of course is a big big company and uh, they they run on sidecar for a long long time so yeah I'm really happy with this year. With the high profile of this British Championship, how do you see the future of sidecar racing progressing? I think we have a good future. Um, the World Championship is progressing as well. Um, we have a good championship here. We have a good championship in Germany as well. So yeah, we have a uh, race with MotoGP uh, in Sachsenring, my home Grand Prix. I'm looking forward to that, of course. And yeah, we'll get better and um, I'm proud to be part of it. With 28 sidecars on the line, it's going to be a very busy grid. And on this 1.2 mile Brands Hatch Indy circuit, where these sidecars are lapping in 48 seconds, there's only one place to be on the grid, and that's at the sharp end. How do you guarantee that? Well, you qualify for it, of course, and that is what this session is all about. With four or five world-class crews out there at Brands Hatch, getting pole position was never going to be easy. Local boys, well, local boys to the UK, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, put the hammer down very, very early and set the first few quick times. The Birchalls were out there as well. It was just the most stunning entry. The track also, not exactly that grippy, but everybody was out there on slick tyres. It had been very damp all morning. Scott Laurie, James Neve, they had a point to prove because they are really playing catch-up after what could have been such a good season in 2011. Ben and Tom Burchill as well want to get as many points as they can in this opening round because they were due to miss round two on World Championship. New pairing, Barry James and Callum Lawson with brand new livery acquitted themselves well. Lovelock and Lawrence, though, did a sterling job. Ben and Tom Burchill set the early pace, though, on the top of the timesheets. The Mansfield pairing rarely put a foot wrong, but they knew they'd be under pressure from local man Tim Reeves sporting a new passenger in the shape of Ashley Halls. They had already done enough, three or four laps from the end, to secure their pole position. Tim Reeves, Ashley Halls, new season, Tim, starting off where you left off last year, great pole position. Yeah, well, I've got to say I did really enjoy it. It's, we've had, it's great. We've had a massive change over the winter, and it's a whole new team, and it's got some good good backers, and got new passenger, new livery, new bike, new gear, and it's just it, what a way to start the year. Eh? It was fantastic, and Ashley done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, yeah, what can I say? I'm over the moon. Change of engines. I mean, as you say, a complete change, Ashley. And what's it like riding with this man? Big act? Oh, no, not an act at all. He's an absolutely superb driver. It's, you know, I couldn't turn down the ride when he asked me, and just done my best and got pole position. Is it too early at this stage, Tim, to say what you're going to do with Worlds, you're going to do the World Championship? Have you made a decision on that? It's, real, it's really difficult at the moment. This is such a fantastic championship, and, uh, but unfortunately, because of the backers I've got, they really want a World Championship. and We're off to, we're off to Magna Corps next week to, 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 for the first round, and at the moment, all I'm going to say is that we're missing Thruxton, which is the next round of this, to go to the first round of the World Championship, and then we'll just have to see how it pans out. I mean, I'd so love to do this championship, you know, as well, and because Roger Body's done such a lot of work to get it up and up and running, and a fantastic credit to him. And if we could support it, we really will. Get some points in the bank then. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what the plan, mate. I think it's going to be a tough battle. I knew Mr. Birch was not far away, is he? So I think it'd be good for the spectators.
With 28 outfits, it's a huge grid. Front row then, Reeves and Birchall. Steinhausen and Clues, new pairing there alongside Lovelock and Lawrence. Ben Holland, Lee Watson, and that's the fourth row. Laurie Neve. Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson, Kershaw, Reuterholt, the new man from Sweden, Smith and Lambert completing row six. Stevens and Clark from Northern Ireland. Horsepole, Gary Horsepole, Mark Edwards there, Brian Gray, Colin two, and John Holden, a new man to the championship. Another newcomer, Liam Abbott, then Ian Guy, one of the regulars, Janos Remshi, Jamie Biggs, Ian Drown, and his new passenger from Northern Ireland again, Young and Rod Robinson at the back, it's Chaplow. Well, that's how they line up. As you can see, it's a very busy grid. The tension's building here. I hope it is at home. We'll be back after a very short break for race one. As for me, I fancy a burger. Here we go then, welcome to 2012, the first of 18 races on the Eastern Airways British F1 Sidecar Championship Trail. Pole position, Tim Reeves. Conditions, I have to say at this point, tricky. So tire choice, a bit of a lottery. What do you do? Do you go with a slick and skate off the thing? Do you go with a wet and risk tearing it up? Do you stay with an intermediate and play safe? And I think they're talking about tires now. Carol McBride alongside me will be bringing her into the action once we get this 15 lap race underway. The Slovenian, Janos Remsche settling down. The lower you can get down, watch the lights. Watch the lights, they go. Everybody dumps the clutch and away they go towards Paddock Hill Bend with Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence into the early lead. Tim Reeves went backwards from pole position. The Birchall shot through on the inside. The rest of the field, four abreast into Paddock Hill Bend. That looked like an accident waiting to happen, but Reeves played a canny move. Round the outside he went into an early lead. Carol, these early stages where everybody's jostling for position, you've got to be oh so careful. Oh yeah, you've got to watch what's, what's going on in front of you, make sure you've got a gap to get through. First couple of laps, let them settle down, then pick your way through, go for it. Roger Lovelock got on the white stuff then and lost all forward traction. Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson on the number four L&W outfit, shot through on the inside at Surtees. They're at clearways now for the first time. Ben Holland, Lee Watson there. There's our friend Reuterholt from Sweden with his Finnish passenger. Scott Laurie, James Neve, number 72, right behind the Lovelock Lawrence pairing. Birchall 16, then it's Andy Peach. So there's your one, two, three. Fourth place then for Roger Lovelock. Already they're strung out, six of them have made a breakaway. Aren't we lucky to have a camera looking backwards from Tim Reeves, but you can see how he bogged down. He's not known for his quick starts. Lovelock shot through, Andy Peach as well, and looking forwards from Roger Lovelock, he went straight through the middle, leaving Ben and Tom Burchill for dead off the line. Yep, and there he is. He's taking advantage again around the bottom now. I think that's Scott Laurie coming up behind him. Scott but Laurie, we're looking at him now on board, looking at the back end of Rick Lawrence. Not the most appealing side, if I have to say, <laughs> but there we have his boot tucked underneath, and they're into clearways now, round and round and round they go. Scott Laurie is such a tough, tough driver. Look at the passenger working. Is it always like that? Yep, absolutely. He's trying to get the uh, weight of the back wheel to keep the grip on there, and especially in these conditions with it being slightly damp, so that's an absolute key role that he's playing there on that. Well, Scott Laurie, James Neve on the back of Lovelock. They're slipping away now from the leading trio. So, Tim Reeves, Ben Birchall, Andy Peach. There's your top three. In fourth place, it's 49. Then it's 72, Scott Laurie. Then it's Barry James and Callum Lawson. Then Ben Holland and Lee Watson, the other half of the boy band, coming down towards the Graham Hill Bend. Are they going the long way round? There is no room there. Barry James cuts it up. Beautiful, beautiful. Very, very pretty bike. Another one of those with a one-piece fairing, just the same as the Birchalls. Any involvement there? Um, yeah, I think the sponsor's the same. So the fairing has come from, from that aspect. So obviously, normally, the rest of the bikes, the wheel arch is separate, and you have to fix it. So that makes it easier to come off and better streamlining, I would think, as well. Birchalls, of course, on Yamaha. Roger Lovelock, the green bike, 49 Suzuki. Ahead of him, Scott Laurie Suzuki. Tim Reeves, incidentally, moving from Honda Power to Suzuki for 2012. Birchall's then with the R1 Yamaha, the 2008 Screamer engine, as opposed to the Big Bang engine run by the number 10 crew of Rod Robinson. 
In third place, Andy Peach, Charlie Richardson, another Suzuki crew. Reevesy looking very, very calm, Carol. Yeah, very, very smooth, isn't he? And uh, I think it looks like that track might be drying out a bit now, isn't it? So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the tyre choices they've been making there as well. Well, looking back now at Ben and Tom Birchall snaking just a little bit. And if you ask me, you mentioned tyre choice. It looks already at this stage as though there might be a tyre problem slightly. With the, they're moving in, they're moving in, they're going on the inside. Ashley Hawes looking as Ben Birchall goes past into the lead. So we have a new race leader. There's me saying they're snaking all over the place. Well, they've snaked into the lead. You can't do better than that. Away they go. Paddock Hill Ben, Tim Reeves, Ashley Hawes on local ground for Tim Reeves. Will not like that being passed by the Birchalls, but these are world championship runners at the top of their game. Yeah, and they're going to be wanting those points, being away at the world championship round next weekend. So everything is going to count they're both going to be wanting maximum points from both these races this weekend off to Manicor for the next first round basically the next weekend the first round of the world championship these two boys really need a bag full of points as carol so rightly said here in the opening round at brands hatch ben and tom Birchall, number 16 on the mitchells of mansfield yamaha lcr tim reeves ashley halls suzuki Haith family sponsored, number 77, three times world champion, reigning British champion. It don't get any better than that, I can promise you. Ben and Tom Birchall, though, on their way to 25 points here on what is a rapidly drying Brands Hatch Indy circuit into third place. Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, they are closing, closing, closing visibly. Carol, are we in for a surprise here? They're on the back of them. I think we could be Barry, he's definitely hunting them down, isn't he? It's getting closer and closer. So who knows, it could be any of those three, I think. Again, that wiggle of the number 16 as they put the power on the Yamaha. Look how close they are now. These three moving away. New fourth place man, Ben Holland and Lee Watson. They always go well here on home ground. Scott Laurie, James Neve, Barry James, Callum Lawson. And then it's York Steinhaus and Gregory Clues, right with Lawson. Number 99, John Holden. With him, Ricky Stevens. Two newcomers to the championship and they're acquitting themselves very well indeed. Holden, interesting, Carol, was one of those runners opting to run slick tyres, as indeed did Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence. Have they taken the ultimate gamble that's going to pay off? I wonder. John Clark ahead of them. I think they could be, actually. I think as the track starts to dry out, then the wet, wet tyres are going to go off and the uh, slicks are going to be definitely going to be the way to go, I think. Well, John Holden, Isle of Man TT winner in 2011. First time on a long outfit, what we call the long outfits, the F1s, the big engines. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charlwood in the blue in the middle of that bunch. And interestingly, the man at the back of that trio, in fact, the man in the middle of that trio, almost, in the grey and orange, number 27, that's Johan Reuterholt. And that's a spin for Tim Reeves and Ashley. They have spun it. And look at the tyre. Look at the rear tyre. You can see it's almost falling apart. It's degraded significantly, and they have paid the price. They have spun out of the lead. Let's take a look then and see what happened. Oh, the back goes. The back goes. It breaks away. They've lost it. God, they were lucky they weren't collected by Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence as they went through. There it is. Goodness me. How close do you want it? That was a very near thing indeed. Oh, tyres, there's a man underneath that. That's Ben Holland and Lee Watson. Look at the rear tyre again. Well, I'm talking about the tyres. There's a man trapped underneath there. So Ben Holland and Lee Watson, they've spun it and turned turtle as well. So he's OK. That's the good news. The marshals lift it so he can wriggle out. Let's take a look at that. You see the poor driver stuck completely inside it. Lee Watson, the passenger, getting a good look at the Brands tarmac for a second time because he rolled over and over last year. In the lead then, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, way behind them, the Birchalls, the outfit immediately behind number 58, Kyle Young and Stephen Mullin from Northern Ireland. There they are. There goes the number 58 outfit. The Birchalls right there then, but they're in second place. Nothing they can do about it. Janusz Remsche, number 18, ahead of the Birchalls, but he's being lapped. Let's have a look as Lovelock goes through on the inside of the Birchalls, gets the hammer down, he's on slick tyres, and look at that, 52.798, the fastest lap, Lovelock getting quicker and quicker. Birchalls then lapping Kyle 
and Stephen Mullen, but not a fat lot they could do because they've got wet tyres. No, no, definitely those on wets are starting to struggle now, aren't they? So it'd be interesting to see how the others fail that got slicks, whether they start to pick their way up for the grid now. I did actually notice, and I commented on the fact that Birchall's were getting out of shape quite early on in the race uh, when they were having that ding-dong battle with Tim Reeves. Reeves spun out, Birchall's are still going, but Tom Birchall is having to work really, really hard, and the driver, too, having to work to keep it on three wheels. 1.2 miles remaining for Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, who rode so valiantly in the 2011 season. This crew from Marlborough with absolutely zero sponsorship, hence the plain outfit. A retained fireman at the helm, and the man at the back, well, what does he do for a living? I think Rick's a washing machine repair man, I think, actually. There you go. That's sidecar racing for you. Everybody has to put in a good day's work to keep these outfits, and it's a big budget, I can tell you, to race a Formula One sidecar outfit. This is the rider's eye view, then. Nothing ahead of them. It's a clear track, round clearways, appropriately named. The run to the flag should be a cakewalk, and it'll be a popular, popular win, I can tell you, for the number 49 crew of Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence. Race one at Brands goes to them. Hectic stuff. Fantastic action and a great result. Reeves has recovered. We'll have to wait and see where he ended up in the final analysis, but it was Birchall then getting second place from this pairing, and there, the customary headstand from Rick Lawrence. 25 points. What a way to start your 2012 season. Ben and Tom Birchall will have picked up 20, and let's take a look then at where Tim Reeves finished up. Not bad. Seventh. Better than nothing. Scott Laurie, James Neve got the final place on the podium. John Holden, Andy Winkle, brilliant for first time, fourth place. James Lawson, Steinhausen got sixth and ten points. All the way down to Rod Robinson in 18th place, picking up a point on that cross plane Yamaha. Liam Abbott in 16th, number 91, another newcomer. Our Swede, Reuterholt, there's more to come from him, I can tell you. He's in 14th. Look at the DNFs, they didn't make it. Peach, Edwards, Ian Guy, and Greg Lambert. Roger Lovelock, Rick Lawrence, what a fantastic way to begin an 18 race season, Roger. Yeah, I know, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Um, yeah, what a way to start a season, you know, first, brilliant. Um, no, we had a brilliant start, off the line like a scolded cat. Um, but, yeah, up there in the top there, it was a bit damp, and I think the wet tires, you know, we had slicks on, so the wet tires were suited for that. Uh, but down the back straight here, we were sort of clawing him in bit by bit, and then it tended to dry out towards the end a little bit, I think, and uh, it was to our advantage. So, yeah, we were on slick, so it worked well for us. Rick, did it come down to a battle of tyres at the end of the day? Yeah, I think so. We went out there on the wet. It was a little bit slippery to start with, and it dried. There was no doubt about it. Down the back straight originally, we was over the back wheel getting it to drive. After probably half a dozen laps, I could actually sit in and let it grip itself. And towards the end, I think, yeah, definitely, we caught these guys hand over fist, and... They're not slow, so, um, you know, for us, they had the advantage over the start with wets or inters, I think Scott had, and we went for the other choice slicks. It was a total lottery, to be honest with you. If it had drizzled a bit, we'd be at the back, without any doubt. Ben, Tom Birchall, brilliant. Had to work hard at the start of the race, but it was a real ding-dong and a fantastic race to watch. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I mean, that's what the people come to see races like that, you know. It was all about tyre choice and who, dare, who dares wins, really. Fair play to Roger, he rode a great race. As it, hard work for us in the start, but yeah, we, we, we did all right. I'm really, I'm really pleased. The bike went great and great to be at this venue, you know, with BSB. Great, big thank you to all my sponsors and friends, yeah. Excellent, good way to start the season, Tom, and one place better tomorrow? Yeah, for sure, we'll be trying hard. Hopefully we'll get a bit of dry weather and, you know, put them lap times together. Well done, both of you. Thank you. Yes. Scott Laurie, James Neve, probably the furthest travelling driver, came in late, got it all together. What a great result, you must be happy. I'm very happy, it's good to start the season on the podium. Yeah, fantastic. And James, uh, all right for you, it looked fairly straightforward, bit of traffic, but it was okay. Uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, catch up a few back markers, we thought, well, I could see Barry behind, and I thought, well, might, but yeah, it was all right, it's a good race. That's an absolutely brilliant way to end part two and race one, the first race of the season. A win for Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence. Can they make it a double at Brands? Join us again after the break for race two.
to the grid for race two and it's freezing I can tell you there's been a dramatic change in the weather conditions since the first race absolutely no question of tyre choice this time John Holden pulled a really cute move in race one to get himself fourth with a brilliant brilliant slick tyre choice but everybody will be on wets so another man who used slicks was our new pole position man race one winner Roger Lovelock with Rick Lawrence 18 laps let's get it on Throughout the 2012 season, the race one result will determine the grid for race two, just as it has done here. The rain is coming down, the wind coming from the northeast, it is bitter, I can tell you. So the sooner the better for these guys to get the race on and get warmed up. The lights, you can see how misty it is. It is desperately, desperately difficult. Visibility is going to be a real problem, but we have a packed grid, 12 rows, so 24 outfits go. Scott Laurie, James Neve taking a really good sneaky move from their second row start into third place. Remember, Tim Reeves coming from the back, seventh in the first race. What a good start he's had. Reeves then up to second place. Ben and Tom Birchall's runner-up in race one. The race winner and the pole position man, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, down there in fourth. Barry James, number three. Callum Lawson on the blue outfit. Alongside him, they are in fifth. Then I can see Jörg Steinhausen and Greg Clues, number 39. The German, the best of the foreigners in the opening race. Carol, these conditions, nothing short of appalling. Ian Drown and Ken Edwards paying an early price for that. I gather there's been a bit of a mishap as well on the circuit. Yeah, as well as the wet weather, they've got to contend with the, um, the fuel spillage on the track earlier um, and also then detergent used to clear it. And in fact, the superbike race isn't running, so the sidecars really have saved the day today. Well, save the day, there's still a lot of spectators here at Brands Hatch. This race, too, is certainly late in the day. There have been all sorts of incidents with oil and fuel spillage, as Carol so rightly said. But the race at the front, Ben and Tom Birchall, Tim Reeves, Ashley Hawes. Tim Reeves desperate to make amends for his seventh place in the first race has taken the lead round the outside at Druids. Scott Laurie, James Knee, then Roger Lovelock, Rick Lawrence, Barry James, Callum Lawson. Nothing in it. These five outfits, and look how wet it is. How do you cope, Carol, in these conditions? Unbelievable. Yeah, a passenger in these conditions is actually easier because you don't have to move around so much, but in the sense that you do have to be really, really smooth on the bike so you don't want to unstabilise it. And if you can see from the first race, you look at the left-handers, they're tending to stick more towards the back wheel to make sure they get that grip. Well, given that it's wet now, Tim Reeves knows it's going to stay wet. He knows it's slippery out there. Is he going to make a break? Is he going to put as much air as he possibly can between himself, himself and Ben and Tom Birchall? Well, this is the start he made. We're riding with York Steinhaus and Greg Clues. On the left, you can see Tim Reeves, Ashley Hawes, round the outside of everyone at Paddock Hill Bend. The sidecar wheel was almost on the grass. He looked pretty anxious at that moment, going towards the gravel, but he got away with it. Yep, he just got away with it. I saw him flying past Lovelock. I think he's just gone a little bit wide on the back bottom of the haddock to get that advantage. Barry James Callum Lawson have eased ahead of Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence. The foot of the passenger, Callum Lawson's foot dangling tentatively over the tarmac. Gary Smith, along with his new passenger for 2012, Carl Morgan, they've called it a day. They've had enough. Whether it's conditions, whether it's mechanical, I don't know. But those new letters are not going to get any more rain on them in this race. Barry James and Callum Lawson then on that very distinctive, very pretty outfit. Uh, the Suzuki pairing. Barry James, of course, uh, teamed up last year with Jamie Wynn. Had somewhat of a, an interesting season. And upside down no fewer than five times. Under very strict orders this year to keep it on three wheels. And he's doing an excellent job, I have to say. A really, really first-class job. One of our... I won't say a young pretender, but obviously one of the fancied young riders coming through, Barry James. Yes, relatively inexperienced compared to the rest of the field, but very, very good driver. They say a few instances last year, but say hopefully now he'll calm down a bit, and you wouldn't want to be damaging that nice new fairing, would you? <laughs> There's that foot again. There's that foot again, because when, when Callum Lawson hugs the right-hand side of the bike, his leg's got to go somewhere. So he trails his left leg just behind the wheel out, closing on the back then of Scott Laurie and James Neve. The number three outfit, James James and Lawson, Laurie and Neve ahead of them, out in front, it's Reeves and Birchall, is he going for third? Is there room there? He's got the bit between his teeth, Carol, there's room now because Scott Laurie has drifted wide, can they tuck on the inside and have they got the speed down the straight and into Paddock Hill Bend, I wonder. 
don't know if he's going to get in there, actually. But difficult to say with that spray, though, isn't it? Oh, he's having another go. Yes, yeah, he's going to make it stick. He's got it. That was a copybook move. Beautiful. On the inside, he'd lined up Scott Laurie and James Neve very well indeed. So we're now looking forward from Scott Laurie on the back of Barry James and Callum Lawson with the red light glowing invitingly ahead of him. Come on, follow me. My lamp's on. All you've got to do is follow it. Hmm. Easier said than done. James Neve looking over his shoulder now, wondering where the next challenge is coming from and lining up in the shape of Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence behind them. But these, the one, two. It's Reeves, then it's Birchall. Jorg Steinhausen looking menacing as well on the back of the Lovelock-Lawrence pairing. They're a little bit out of shape across the rumble strip. These conditions making it so difficult. I know I keep on about the conditions, but we can't even see properly through the camera, so what can they see? No, I mean, they're, you know, but there's a gap there, they've got no spray, but as soon as they're behind someone, they're going to get it all off the rear wheel. And there he goes, he's gone through, I think, isn't he? He's just taking advantage of Roger. There it is, Steinhausen creeping through ahead of Lovelock and Lawrence. And look at that, Steinhausen with Gregory Clues, the reigning British champion passenger, Greg Clues, the Frenchman from down near Bordeaux, with uh, Jörg Steinhausen, son of the famous double world champion Rolf Steinhausen as we heard early on in one of Carol's interviews with this German gentleman he'll be here in the Eastern Airways Championship for as much as the World Championship will allow as indeed will these guys Barry James and Callum Lawson will see them every race we'll see Laurie every race Steinhausen on his way and these guys former British champions uh, a couple of times in actual fact and runners-up last year, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, can they go one better and lift the Eastern Airways title? I wonder. And that's John Holden and Andy Winkle retiring to the pits there. Fourth in the first race, I think, they were. Looks like the end of their game now. That's a shame, because he was doing really well. As I say, Isle of Man TT winner, F2 regular, first season for a long time on F1s. The man in the origin grey outfit, Johan Reuterholt and Aki Alto, the Finnish passenger, uh, would you believe it, the gentleman is a paraplegic, in the, paralyzed from the waist down in a racing accident in 94. He now drives that outfit with the top half of his body and his hands. And I tell you what, he's a tough competitor. He really, really races. Yep, he was very unhappy with the result in the first race, and he's definitely be wanting more, more now. And you can see him battling there with Mark Edwards. He's not giving an inch. He's like, oh, see? <laughs> Nothing there at all. Reuter Holtberg from Sweden, through on the inside. We're going to be seeing him in every single round of the Eastern Airways F1 Sidecar Championship. Barged his way through. Mark Edwards thought he'd close the gap. Mark Edwards thought, oh, it's easy. I'm going to go for a hole that isn't there. Reuter Holt, in fairness, was on the racing line. He was on the line. He knew where he was going. Mark thought he was on a solo for a second. Yeah, I think. I think he did. I think that gap <laughs> where he thought was wider than it actually was. John Clark and Stuart Graham, the number 90 outfit with the red top half there from Banbridge County down. There, Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charwood, number 100. In your shot now, Scott Laurie, James Neve having something of a miserable uh, outing here in the second race. And that's how miserable. They're on Brighton Beach here at Brands Hatch, rattling across the gravel, but they keep it on the island. Incredible. Yeah, that's a good save, actually. You don't want to be going off there. If you get sideways, uh, it tends to roll over, but he kept it opposite, locked it, and kept it going forwards. Tim Reeves, Ashley Hawes, race leaders, Ben and Tom Birchall. Consecutive second place, it's looking like for them. Mark Edwards and Lee Barrett. Lee Barrett teamed up in 2011 with Gordon Shand, and Mark Edwards had all sorts of problems with his Kawasaki, but this year he's got it sorted. Well, he did until he, that happened. And that was Mark Edwards and Lee Barrett just reversing down Graham Hill. But they keep it going, they keep it running. The Kawasaki looking very strong indeed, and they will rejoin the action. Janusz Remsche, number 18, with Jamie Biggs in the sidecar, about to be lapped by the flying duo of Tim Reeves and Ashley Hawes, number 77, sporting new livery this year, sporting a new bus, sporting a new engine. It's all changed for Reevesy, but he's looking good here at Brands for 25 points in the second race. The conditions, though, still dreadful. Everybody's slip sliding away. Now it's getting strung out. Ben and Tom Birchall. I won't say they settle for second because they never settle for second. And here's Johan Reuterholt and Ricky Stevens. Ricky Stevens spins. We're going to take a short break. The action will continue here at Brands after that break.
going back to Brands where the weather is grey and miserable, but the action on track, I can tell you, is anything but. Reeves is on fire at the head of the race. Ashley Hawes just climbing all over the outfit to give the man maximum grip and steerage. They're well among the tail enders now lapping, and you can expect that, of course, on a 1.2 mile circuit with 18 laps, they're going to get in the traffic. Carol, the traffic could be a factor because Ben and Tom Virtual are looking like they're as close now as they've been for a while. Could it play into their hands? Yeah, and especially coming up into that corner, obviously Drew is isn't the easiest place to pass, so you're going to be expecting some of the back markers to take lines to let them through, but that's not always the case because they're not always aware they're there. And I think that's actually Ricky Stevens we could see, wasn't it, back on circuit there, so he must have recovered from that spin. Well, that's good. Number 32, Gary Horsepole, Rob Briggs. Briggsy looking over the shoulder because he knows there's somebody quick behind. Well, it's Ian Guy behind. Virgil's gone through. They're just making sure that the fast crews are not likely to clip them on the way through and, of course, do the decent thing and get out of the way. Yeah, I, I don't think they actually need to get out of the way. There's always a bit of an argument over that, is whether, you know, whether you, the experienced driver picks their way through the line. And I think it's probably safer if they hold their line and allow the experienced ones to get past them. Well, I'm old enough to remember sidecar handicaps when the quick men started at the back of the grid. Now, that would be very interesting to run a sidecar handicap in this day and age. Presumably, it's too dangerous. Well, maybe to run the Hutchinson 100, run it back. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse direction. Look at this. Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charlwood have slotted in front of the second place crew, Ben and Tom Birchall. Tim Reeves out in front, but Birchall's are closing. Is Ricky Stevens going to get in the way? He's certainly following in their wheel tracks. Ben and Tom Birch have got to find a way past him. Yeah, they'll have the power to get past on that. There won't be too much of an issue down there, I don't think. And I think that's Ricky just moving over now. So, yep, and he's through, isn't he? So this is your race leader just disappearing out of shot. Second place, the red and white number 16. Mitchell's of Mansfield outfit on target for a second pocket full of points. 20 points in the first race. If they get 20 this time, they will be leading the championship, leaving Brands Hatch. There you can see, lap 11 of 18, position one for Reeves. Birchall's then in second place. These two have fought so hard, it's dragged them away from the rest of the field and scrapping very hard for the final podium place. It's Jörg Steinhausen and Barry James but they're way, way down the order. These two just edging and edging further away. They're among the traffic, but it's good. Gary Horsepole, Ian Guy. Ian Guy on the white outfit with Nick Webb. Nick Webb's been around a long time, and I can tell you that because he's got the ready mixed leathers on, and that was a year or two ago. Yeah, it certainly was, wasn't it? And Nick Webb used to passenger for Andy Peach, and I think Andy Peach used passenger for Ian Guy, and I used passenger for Ian Guy. Well, there you go. There you go. So Ian Guy has had a few passengers over the years, but then he's been at it a while. Gary Horsepole right with him. These two having a ding-dong. Here comes Ben Holland and Lee Watson. We're riding with Ben Holland and Lee Watson now. They've got a point to prove. Upside down in the first race. They're on... Well, they're not on local ground. They're from Portsmouth. But, well, Lee is from Essex, but... Uh, Ben Holland from Portsmouth, one of our young, fancied drivers, the man who's got a huge amount of talent. John Holland racing the team. John Holland, of course, his father, a sidecar racer in his day. And here they come on the inside then, moving through. They're starting to go. Behind them, the green outfit, number 49, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lodge. So, Carol, it's fair to say the crew on the move, it's Holland. Yeah, I think it's definitely Ben, isn't it? And I think we're looking at uh, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence there, and you could just for a moment see the spray that they're getting off that, um, off that camera there. The 151 sticker, Rod Cameron, the supplier of leathers and boots to these guys, very much active in the sidecar paddock. Ben Holland and Lee Watson, number 60, on the yellow outfit, have regained that fifth place from Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence, pushing them back down the order. So they're in a 10-point position at the moment, Lovelock and Lawrence. At the front, though, Tim Reeves stretching that gap away from the Birchalls, and there's a very big distance back to third. The track still mucky, still wet, but slightly, slightly better. But I don't think we're going to have a race of attrition in terms of tyre wear this time because there's still spray coming out of the back of the outfits. They still need wet tyres, and I don't think, Carol, the tyres are going to fall to pieces this time. No, there's enough water there, isn't there, to keep the tyres cool, isn't there? 
and I think so the whole grid's likely to be on wet so I can't see anybody else making any other choice in those conditions. I can tell you the number 69 outfit Greg Lambert and Shelley Smith is the only lady competing this year in the Eastern Airways F1 British Sidecar Championship so my hat goes off to Shelley Smithers. She's doing a great job, and Greg Lambert steaming on there. He's been lapped by Reeves, no disgrace. He's been lapped by Birchall, no disgrace. These boys are world championship runners at the top of their game, and they need to get as many points as they can before they go off to Manny Cor next week. Greg Lambert with one wheel on the rumble strip, but now all he's got to do is tuck in and follow the Birchalls. Does it work like that? Well, I guess if he's tucks in behind him a couple ups, he might gain a few lines, won't he? <laughs> Greg Lambert then from Richmond, North Yorkshire. Another man who does the TT on a regular basis. Isle of Man TT outfits, of course, 600cc F2s. These are the big ones, the F1s. Engines from Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki, et al. And this, the battle for fifth place. Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence having got past Ben Holland and Lee Watson. Now, where did they do that? This is Druid. Round the top of Druid, surely there was no way past there. There's no, well, there is room. He must have had his sidecar wheel on the grass. That was a fantastic move. Can he keep it in? Obviously, he can. So now, up to fifth. This is your race leader, Tim Reeves, Ashley Hawes. One lap left to do. Kyle Young and Stephen Mullen, the guys from Lisbon, County Down, doing the full season this year, getting a riding lesson in the nicest way from Tim Reeves. Those boys, though, Irish champions, good runners, good to see them over here. Reeves, he's sliding the back end. Carol, a quick final word. It settled down, but the conditions played a big part. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's given the advantage, isn't it, over the two World Rail Cruise experiences showing there. And I, I can't see that position changing now. He's not going to have enough drive to the line to get that that one over on Reeves. 25 points then, almost in Tim Reeves' pocket from this race to add to the seventh place. And that will be nine points that he picked up from race one. Here he is then. Ashley Hall's head nodding. He knows they've done it. He's played more than his part in this one. A brilliant piece of passengering, a brilliant piece of driving. The checkered flag goes. A terrific final race here to save the day at a rain-sodden, oil and fuel-soaked Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. Steinhausen, too, going well. Brilliant result for them. And there it is, Reeves, the winner. He's a happy boy, and he'll take home a few pound notes as well for prize money. He won't get that in the World Championship. Well, Tim Reeves and Ashley Halls definitely needed those 25 points. A good, solid runner-up spot again for the Birchalls. There's confirmation of that runner-up spot. Reeves then the winner. Steinhausen and Clues on the podium. Haven't seen Steinhausen in the UK for a long, long time. He'll be thrilled. Barry James, Callum Lawson, Lovelock and Lawrence fifth, Holland Watson sixth. What a battle that was. Clark and Graham, Reuter Holt, more points for the disabled Swede. And I think there's a lot more to come from him. Look at that, Kershaw and Wilson got some points and they needed it. Young and Mullen, respectable. Greg Lambert gets the final point with Shelley Smithers. Our DNFs, well, there they are. York Steinhausen, Greg Clues, congratulations to you both. York, what a brilliant way to start your British season. Yeah, it was better than expected. Uh, we struggled in the first heat, but the second was a lot better. Get more comfy with the bike and Greg, and it's all new to us with the BMW and... Um, Different talk, different tires. So yeah, I'm glad that we didn't uh, had to go off and um, prepared for Brent Sedge and uh, Magni Kuhn next week. Greg, brilliant. So your first podium with your, you must be thrilled. Yeah, it's a really, really good race. We, we take uh, no risk. I'm really happy. And I need to say, uh, say thank you to all the sponsors. Thank you to your because you do a great job. You know, the last race you do is it's in 2006. So I think after six years off, it's a good, it's really good result here. Ben and Tom Birchall, another solid podium, 40 points. That's a good way to start the season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Seems like we're always going to be the bridesmaid today. We, we wanted a win, but we tried our hardest and, you know, we got what we got. We're certainly not complaining. I've, I've always struggled in the wet and that's the best ride we've ever had. And, you know, yeah, enjoyed it. Tom, how do you see? And there was a lot of spray out there, wasn't it? Yeah, it gets quite bad. And when you're following somebody with these big back tyres we run on these, you know, it's like somebody throwing a bucket of water at you. But 
you just got to get on with it, haven't you? It's the same for everybody else. But uh, you know, really pleased, and we've had a great weekend. You know, nice come away with the overall win. Big thanks to Sean Egerty and everybody who's helped us and who's come to see us this weekend. Tim Reeves, Ashley Halls. Tim, I said to you when we were talking in the paddock, you get a good start and you'll be away. I mean, you made no mistake, you were around the outside at Paddock Hill. Yeah, from the fourth row, I knew it, I was going to have to get the jump off the line. And when you're back there, you're a bit more relaxed, believe it or not. When you're on the front row, you're a bit more tensed up. And I just I got real good drive. And, and I, you know, I nearly led into Paddock, so just got real good drive. And Ashley done a fantastic job. What can you know? What a brilliant start to a, a career for him with me. And yeah, excellent job by him. When you go off the line like that, Ashley, and uh, is your head down? Are you looking? Are you sort of peeping up? Is it head down and which you get to the right hander? Uh, always, always look forward and follow my driver. So like Andy, um, nah, just sit on the back wheel and keep it gripping. So that's all I did. Well, Ben and Tom Birch will go away from Brands Hatch with a title lead, four points over Lovelock and Lawrence. Reeves there on 34, so he made amends in the second race. Steinhausen, he'll be thrilled. Laurie, James, good start for them. Brian Gray, seventh in the title. Further down the order, Andy Peach would not have wanted to be 11th after round one with just eight points, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Roy Terholt, he's got six, and the rest of them, well, you can see for yourselves. Well, that's it from a very cold, wet and soggy Brands Hatch. But the upside is we've had two terrific F1 sidecar races to kickstart our 2012 season. Round two comes from Thruxton. It'll be equally frenetic there on one of the quickest circuits in the UK. So whatever you do, don't miss Thruxton. From all of us here at Brands, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.